Welcome to May's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is possible by partition. Given a set of n people numbered 1 through n, we would like to split everyone into two groups of any size. Each person may dislike some people, and they may not go into the same group. We're given a list of relations, dislikes, with a and b showing that these two people are not allowed to be in the same group. So we return it true if and only if it's possible to split everyone into two groups. So say we're given a list like this. Uh, we know that there's four people and we could divide them up into groups one and two here with one and four and two to three. So that's going to be a true. Otherwise, there's some other examples where there's no way to make two groups with all these conditions holding where they're not going to be in the group that they don't like anyone. So, so I worked on this for about an hour and I was trying to do a gradual by partition and using sets, it just wasn't working out. And finally, I admit I had to look at the solution and I thought, oh, I would have never gotten this solution. <laughs> like, it would have taken me a million years to think of this. It's funny because just when you think you're starting to get a hang, hang of these questions, these LECO questions, like, a question comes, comes to you and you're like, okay, I am just not there yet. Like, there's so much more I need to learn. So let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you the concept. Say we're given this as our input, A, B, B, D, C, A. And here we represent each one of these values as a node. Let's graphically make some edges to so, show the relationships where they can't be in the same group. So A to B would be one edge, B to D would be another, and C to A would be one more. There's this concept known as graph by part eight, where if we can partition these groups into two, or into two groups, it should hold that these relationships for each group should always be the opposite. So what I mean by that is, say we started at A and we mark this as group one, so we'll call that, that red. Whatever it's connected to, B here and C here, these should be the opposite group. They shouldn't be red as well. So we can mark that as we traverse through our edges and say, well, B should be two, C should be two. And now let's check the other conditions. Well, for B, B should be one, right? So we'll mark that as one. And B here, A should be one, that's true. What about C? C is one, and D, D uh, B is two. So this concept will tell us that every single relationship, the nodes, uh, the colors, the groups, are not the same. And if we could represent that somehow, um, that we can use our algorithm to solve this problem. So how can we represent this, like it's all well and good visually, but what about as a data structure? Well, how about an adjacency list? We could have each node as a key inside of a dictionary and have the values be a list of all their adjacency nodes. So for A, it would be B and C, B and C. For B, it would be A and D. For C, it would be just A. And for D, it would just be B. Now we have a data structure we can use. We could traverse through every single one of these and do a depth first search, marking our nodes as we go. If it's already marked, just check. Hey, does the condition hold that it was the opposite of the last group that we called from? And if so, we can continue to down our loop. Anytime that loop breaks, anytime that condition doesn't hold, let's say this was a red here, we marked that as a red before, then we know, oh, hey, there's like a weird overlap here. Sorry, we can't actually partition these two into two groups. So let's go ahead and write that out. All right, so let's first make our adjacency list here and we'll call it uh, D and we'll make that a default dict. Uh, all that is is giving every value a default type. And for all of our A and Bs in dislikes, we're going to say, okay, add it to the list, like that, and D to B append A's. So we'll get repeats, but that's totally fine for, for this problem. Now, we want, want to make some sort of lookup table to indicate what groups there are, right? So we'll have a dictionary and what we'll do is say for 
i in range of 1 through n plus 1, we're going to just have a, a key of all of our numbers with none for now. And we will update these as we go along. Finally, we need to have our depth first search helper method, right? So we'll just call that uh, depth first search. And what we'll pass through is first the node as well as the group. I won't don't call, call that group. We'll call it just G, I suppose. Um, and here's what we'll do. We'll first check, all right, if not um, group of node, then we want to mark it, right? We want to say, okay, well, group node, make that equal to whatever group we passed. Otherwise, just return whether these two groups have equal one another. So just return group of node like this. If that equaled the uh, G that was entered. Now we have to do our depth first search, right? And we'll say for, um, just call it peeps, for all the peeps uh, inside of our dictionary uh, node, what will we do? We want to, um, well, if, if DFS, if, um, if it's not marked, um, how can we do this? So if, if it's not marked, yeah, so basically if we return a false from this, from this point, if at any point we return a false, then we just want to return false and basically say, yeah, this condition doesn't hold. So we'll call our peeps again, and we need to pass in the opposite group of what we've been entered, right? So what I'm going to do is say, all right, we'll say two if i equals one, else we'll just return one because there's only two groups. It's either going to be two or one, so it's going to like flip flop every single time. Uh, so if it's not that, then we turn a false. Otherwise, we've gone through the entire depth for search method and we can return a true. Okay, great. So now what? Now we have to go through each um, node and do our depth first search, like, like I said in, our, in the whiteboard. So we'll just call it n for n in range of i through n plus 1. What do we do? Um, if not group of n, if, if we haven't, um, yeah, if, if we haven't updated the group yet, and also we'll call our DFS and say if n, um, we'll pass group one as our first one. If that returns a false, then we can turn to false here as well. So turn false. And otherwise we get through this entire algorithm, we can return a true. So let's see if that works. Oh, okay, so I is not defined. Oh, of course not. I will call it um, G, right? Yep, so G to that. Okay, so that seems to have worked and we will submit it. There, accepted. So it's tricky, definitely tricky. Um, there's a couple things that you need to think about, like how do we pass in the opposite group each time? And how do we know when to return a false? Um, and this is the part that really threw me um, in a lot of confusion. And it took me a while to finally just get that to work. I, it wasn't very intuitive. I had to play around a lot. So hopefully that helps. I don't completely understand this. Like I have a basic intuition, but it would have taken me easily an hour to solve this um, like in an interview. So thank you and hope that helps.